Hello, my name is Mackenzie Darst and I am a senior communication disorders major here at California University of Pennsylvania. And this is my strike a spark poster presentation for Treacher Collins syndrome. To start off with the introduction, Treacher Collins syndrome is a congenital abnormality of craniofacial development. It bears this name thanks to Edward Treacher Collins who first described his characteristics in 1990 after it was classified as mandubulofacial dysostosis. It occurs in one in 50,000 of births and becomes prevalent as a result of the mutations in the gene TCOF1. This gene, its proteins are responsible in the development of brain and tissue. So that's why it plays a big role in TCS patients. That specific gene is thought to be genetically homogeneous because of the families analyzed to date are linked to the same human chromosome. TCS is characterized by the presence of bilateral asymmetric abnormalities. Speech therapy is often needed for these individuals and surgeries are also very common to combat the facial deformities like cleft palate. For the common effects and features, those who are diagnosed with TCF often have rounded facial profiles, as you can see in the pictures I provided. They often have conductive hearing loss or a cleft palate, belopharyngeal dysfunction. They often will have hypoplasia in the zygomatic complex or in the jaw or and or. Um, they can have mal malformation of the ears. They will often have a downward, downward slant of the eyes and individuals can be so mildly affected that it can be difficult for professionals to even establish a diagnosis. It's believed that genetic background, environmental factors, and other events can contribute to the variation in TCS patients. In regard to treatment for these patients, preoperative planning and evaluation should begin as early as possible. Patients usually require CT scans for planning, measurement, and implant fabrication. Like I said earlier, uh, speech therapy is often needed for these individuals due to their inability to speak correctly, sometimes because of the malformations and possible cleft lip slash palate. Tracheostomies are often required to create an opening in the neck to place a tube in the person's windpipe for better breathing. The tube is inserted through a cut in the neck below the vocal cords. This allows air to enter the lungs Patients may also require a bimaxillary surgery to improve the function and appearance of their jaws. Depending on jaw deformities, a surgeon might reposition their upper and lower jaws completely. They might also change their size by removing pieces of bones. They can also undergo ear reconstruction surgeries as well as palatoplasties, which are sought to reconstruct a person's palate if they are diagnosed with cleft palate. Finally, they may need to undergo tissue resuspensions. In regard to the support groups and foundations, um, there are various support groups and discussion groups, either online or face-to-face -face, for those that are diagnosed with TCS. Um, these groups range from giving advice to uh, making workshops to meet others with the same condition, financial help, and so much more. Wide Smiles is one example, Changing Faces, Children's Craniofacial Association, and March of Dimes. Lastly, one of the major challenges facing the TCS clinical and research community in terms of improving the prognosis of those affected or at risk is in three key areas, detection, repair, and prevention. Ultimately, the long-term goal is to be able to identify natural compound that can be administered before and or during pregnancy. One example would be folic acid, which will provide protection for the embryo from apoptosis when the embryo is most susceptible to craniofacial deformities.